Good morning. Good morning. Uh, welcome to Carson Valley United Methodist Church. My name is Latu Paya. I'm your, your preacher and also your pastor of the great congregation. Uh, before we get started with our worship service, I'd like to ask you to look at your bulletin. We have some blue cards that were given to you. Uh, please fill them out and uh, drop them in the exit, at the exit doors. There's a, some baskets over there, so just drop them right, right, right behind you. Um, look around you. There's some uh, prayer and praise cards in your pew. Uh, if you have a prayer or praise that you want to share with the church congregation, uh, uh, write them down in the prayer and praise card and give them to me during the birthday bank hour. Uh, we are going on to the third Sunday of Easter. As last week was, uh, Jesus said uh, some, some comforting words, which was, peace be with you. He goes on with it with today's um, scripture, which is, peace be with you. So, uh, we are still in, in, a, in a time, uh, we, we are trying to place ourselves in the disciples' shoes in which the crucifixion has happened, the resurrection has happened, and we are still asking ourselves in this theme of the month, which is how shall we live after all these things? How, after all these things have happened, how am I to conduct myself as a believer in Christ? And so before we get started with our church service, I'd like to ask you to look at your neighbor, left, right, front, and back, and tell them hello. hello. As we center ourselves for worship, I'd like to ask the church congregation to please stand if you are able, as we sing our song of gathering, Be Still, My Soul.
Good morning. Heavenly Father, we come before you, O Lord, to thank you for another day. As the sun rises, may your hope rise up in us. May your love flow out of us as the light floods into this new day. May your joy shine upon us. We come before you, O Lord, and drink in this moment of peace that we may carry something of your hope, love, and joy today in our hearts. Amen. Amen. Hello, everybody. Today we will be reading Luke chapter 24, verses 36 through 48. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of boiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their pleasure. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and the rept- repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, <coughs> being from Jerusalem. You are witness of these things, the word of God for the people of God. Please be seated. In celebration of our children, we have Nancy and her puppet friend on recording. You know, you just can't count on anybody. Oh my goodness, Murphy, you seem so sad. Do uh, you want to talk about it? Uh, I guess. Well. It was, did something happen that made you this sad that makes you say you can't count on anybody? Oh, yes. So, so yesterday, my friend said he was going to come over with his new scooters and, and we could both take rides on it, but he never showed up. And then, and my dad said he would get me the newest Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle comic book, and he forgot. You just can't count on anybody. Oh, Murphy, I, I'm sorry that those things happened that made you sad, but, you know, sometimes we do mess up. We're, we're only human, or turtle, or, or turtle. Um, but, you know, I know somebody that you can always count on who, who will never forget you. Oh, nobody's that perfect. Oh, God is that perfect. Huh. Well, wait a minute, but, but like, what if, what if I'm feeling really, really lonely? I, I bet God isn't with me then. No, God is with you all the time. Okay, well, what, but wait, what if I do something really, really bad so that my mom doesn't even want to be with me? She makes me go to my room. God is with you even then, no matter what you do. God loves you, and God will stay with you. You know, people sometimes let us down. They don't follow through on their promises. But you can have faith that God's promises are always real. 
you can always trust God to be with you. Oh, I really like thinking that God's always with me. That makes me feel better. Me too. Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you that we can count on you to always be with us. Help us to remember that in every situation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Every week we celebrate our birthdays and anniversaries and uh, also just all types of things in our lives. Just want to bring it forward to our church congregation and also to celebrate God in our lives. And, uh, and we pay it forward in his birthday bank ministry and uh, it helps feed children around the world and supports all the assistive ministries affiliated with that purpose. And uh, if you have something to celebrate, please come forward and uh, uh, in the presence of the church and also in God. Uh, Come as you are and also bring your praise and prayer cards with you if you have them. Okay, first of all, the praise for how good Kinsley did today. Yes. And secondly, Sunday, even though we had a change of venue and the food was not as good, we had 61 people to go bowling. 27 of them were from 3 years old to 21 years old, and everybody had a wonderful time. All right. Okay. Thank you. CK. My son's 72nd, 72nd birthday. Okay, yes. Happy birthday to your son. Thank you, Donna. Hello. And my son had a birthday, my oldest. All right. Happy birthday to your son. Anybody? My wife, Sharon. And our daughter, Lynn, had birthdays this last week. Sharon, who's better known as Sarge, is currently <laughs> acting out on that. Happy birthday, too. <laughs> our anniversary is this week. All right, happy anniversary. How do you do it? Latu, uh, I'm a little distance from you, but okay. I'd like to put in a celebration for my eldest granddaughter turning 18 last week. Oh, okay. Let me, let me, let me get a coin for it. Okay. I toss it down to you, but that is easy. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. We are new. Yes. We're celebrating, my husband and I are celebrating our 34th anniversary today. Oh, happy anniversary. Hey. I'd like to say a prayer for this birthday bank. Please say aye. aye. Let us pray. Uh, Jehovah Jireh, you are the Lord that provides. Provide us with so many things. If we were to name just one or two, you'll bring joy to our hearts because we know that you're always with us. And so we celebrated by giving to this birthday bank to help feed children around the world and uh, fulfill all the, the support uh, for the, all those purposes. So Lord, we ask you to bless this birthday bank. Uh, so that it could remind us to keep on giving because you have given us your all, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we ask you all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we are going into our, our tithes and offerings. We don't pass a basket around for those that are new here. Um, but we do have locations on the side. And also we have an uh, online giving on our church website. But we do offer a, a portion of our talent. Uh, so our offertory is called the Lord's Prayer, if you view that on your bulletin. It is a South African medley. It was, uh, it was part of a movie called Serafina that was made in the 90s, I believe 92. I was probably like, what, six or something? But, <laughs> um, but I remember we watched it as we were younger because we were trying to... Uh, takes, uh, we were trying to act it out for our youth, up with youth camp in Denver. Mm -hmm. And so, um, uh, if you are sore from yesterday, if after, when, while viewing this, I don't expect you to get up or, or like to, to move around. But if you want to move around, move and groove, you are free to. The Lord's Prayer. Not afraid. We 
Stand if you are able for our prayer of thanksgiving. This is going to fall down on me. Lord, we pray that you would give us the boldness in our thanks, boldness like the mountains that tower this valley. Let us use this offering to show your love to the world. Let us praise you openly and publicly for everyone to hear your goodness. Let our thankfulness be a witness to others. Bring them to Christ. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We are going into our prayers and praises. I will read the prayers that have been submitted to me. And I ask the church congregation to respond with, Lord, hear our prayers after I have read the prayers. I will also read the praises that have been submitted and I ask the church congregation to respond with, we thank you, Lord, after I have read the praises. I ask Len to play a quick snippet if, to acquire our hearts and minds. <laughs> Thank you. 
Our first prayer is from Brenda. Prayers for my uh, cousin Ken and Vicki who lost everything in a fire and are both in the hospital with injuries. Uh, prayers for my friend's daughter, Meg, who fell and has uh, brain bleeds and broken ribs. Prayers, yes. Prayers for my friend's daughter, Meg, who fell and has a brain bleed and broken ribs. Uh, prayers for the people of the Middle East amid all the conflict. Uh, prayers for Pam Broder's sister as she recovers from a heart attack. Uh, prayers for Daryl after uh, an attack last night. I would, I'm trying to read what it is, but please uh, excuse me. Uh, prayers for a yeah. And these are our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Uh, we have a praise. Praise for the 34 volunteers that helped on our party and work day yesterday. And uh, praise for all our for all who came out to the church cleanup yesterday. And if you have to let out a groan, just let it out right now. <laughs> and these are our praises. Let me say a prayer for this third Sunday of Easter. Pray with me. Oh, dear Lord, we are very thankful and gracious that you have woken up this morning with us and you have, you have brought us here to our church congregation to praise you on this third Sunday of Easter. We still ask the question, how should we live after what we have experienced through the accounts of the Gospels, after the resurrection, and, and after enduring what, we've, what they have seen on the cross during the crucifixion? And we ask the question, how are we supposed to live now after all this? Even though the, today's Gospel tells us to live in peace, we are still trying to seek peace in this world. So we ask you, Lord, to sow peace into our community, to our church communities, and also to ourselves as we conduct our lives walking with you, Lord. And so we ask you all this in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I'd like to ask the church congregation to please stand, if you are able, to, uh, as we sing the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> seated. We have an anthem for you, church family. It is titled, Renew Me, performed by the Chancel Choir, directed by Tammy Owens.
Thank you, choir. I'd like to acknowledge God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, three persons in fellowship, blessed Trinity. I'd like to acknowledge this holy sanctuary. I'd like to acknowledge church staff, church volunteers, church attendees. I'd like to acknowledge our viewers from YouTube online. Thank you for joining us wherever you are around the world on a cruise ship or somewhere in somewhere, but you are here. I'd like to acknowledge our, our children and, and youth and young adults, uh, the present and also the future of Carson Valley United Methodist Church. I'd like to acknowledge visitors and friends. Thank you for coming here today. Uh, I come to you with a message from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ from the Apostle Luke chapter 24, verse 36 to 48. I was read to you. By Kinsley, and I think Kinsley left already, but, but she, Kinsley, if you're hearing this on YouTube, thank you for reading that. That was very brave of you. I, am, I apologize if it was very long, <laughs> but that, that is how our church sets up all the verses selected for our lectionary. But praise be to God, we have a growing youth, and this is uh, the order that we expect them to, that we are expecting uh, to work with them. And, and, and it's coming for great. And thank you, Laura, for, for guiding them in, their, in our missions to uh, revamp our youth because this is our longevity for the church. Uh, today's scripture, I will be focusing on Luke chapter 24, verse 38. And I'll, I'm taking these words that sound familiar to you and I as a church congregation and also a believer in Jesus Christ. And the words are these, why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? And my theme for today is, peace be with you, part two. So part one was last week, part two is this week. And we're going to close it uh, th this week with peace be with you, which are words that you and I already uh, are familiar with because it came from Jesus Christ. Uh, last, week, last week we identified how important peace was defined in which it, it is things that we are hoping for and are things that we cannot see or things that are unseen, but we know it's there because it's already been done on the cross, it's already been done in our lives, but are things that are hoped for and things that are unseen. We walked around it theologically, um, looking at the situation of Jesus appearing to the disciples and the disciple Thomas, and he was able to touch the wounds of Jesus. Now, last week also, we, last week's scripture was also a reminder to the disciples to never let their situation consume them, but to hang their fears or their worries, their anxiety and troubles on the Lord. As we identified peace from the lens of the apostle John in his accounts of last week, with the interaction of the disciples of Jesus, they are now at a place that they can proceed as followers of Jesus Christ because they have seen the resurrection and also they have a personal appearance in their establishment. They waited, they endured, and now they are realigned because he has risen. Now today we see a similar account of last week's story through the accounts of Luke in which Jesus appears to them saying, Peace be with you. And all who were present in the room that day were terrified, in which they thought he was a ghost. In verse 38, Jesus says these words, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? And the, this is our key verse for today. Now, let me go in on today's gospel story. Jesus shows his hands and feet to prove that he is not a ghost to his disciples. Now, verse 41, they are in joy and disbelief for Jesus. And then Jesus asks them, do they have anything to eat? Now, in verse 42 and 43, Jesus eats a piece of broiled fish. Verse 44, he tells them that everything that Moses and the prophets and the Psalms have prophesied is now fulfilled through him. In verse 45 and 46, he opens their minds, he opens it to understand the scriptures and says that the Messiah must suffer and rise on the third day, that everything that they're enduring right now is because of him. 
In verse 47, Jesus proclaims that repentance and forgiveness of sins must be in his name. In verse 48, Jesus proclaims that they, his followers, are all witnesses of all that has happened. As indicated earlier, church family, today's uh, sermon uh, scripture is, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? And today's theme, peace be with you, part two. Now, today's sermon I divided into two parts, and I wanted to uh, bring it in, into these two very careful parts so that we're not mixing up last week with this week. Number one, when you are frightened or in doubt, peace be with you. As Christ's witnesses, peace be with you. Now, in an article on November 16th, 2023, last year, uh, authored by Lydia Saad of, of Gallup News, Saad wrote a piece covering the fear of Americans concerning their safety, titled Personal Safety Fears at Three Decade High in U.S. Now, in this article, the author covers uneasy, the uneasiness of how Americans feel on safe living in the United States today. Now, the story highlights specific statistics of uneasiness concerning safety revealing some of these, uh, these statistics. I'll give you a few. 40% of Americans would feel unsafe to walk alone at night. 35% of adults have feared their safety within a mile of their homes. 31% uh, avoid jogging and avoid running and avoid walking. And also, there's more statistics covering different parameters of fear within our own country. The article indicates that crime has worsened as time progresses in this era. Saad also has a statistic of fear for specific crimes, such as identity theft or being mugged. And, and the one that probably you and I encounter on the road on 395 uh, Highway is being attacked while driving. So uh, today we, we, we face of an uneasiness of fear supplicated in our current borders also our current borders here in the uh, United States of America, a border crisis in which the Associated Press and the press and the social media has put on the screen so that me and you are able to, to view it. And the, the Associated Press, Stephen Groves, describes the fear and doubt in America as the crisis that needs a solution. Now, my church found me, I, I wanted the, the state of... I wanted to uh, describe the state of fear and doubt in America as, as something that you and I have in common. The state of fear is in our midst today, and the multiplicity of issues in our country and also in our communities. I, I wouldn't say Gardner. I, I, Gardnerville, I feel so safe over here. I'm not going to lie. I really do. I probably felt the most safest ever uh, for the 38 years of living in this world. I, probably this is the most safest I've felt in, in Gardnerville. But... As we look outside, around in our communities, and also we cannot say that this does not happen. This also plays a role in our own personal lives as Christ believers in falling into a consumption of fear and doubt. Now, in addition to the existing fears and doubts in our, our lives, we are often greeted with anxiety and burden, uh, uncertainty, or a state of depression that may change our lives any minute. As we reflect in today's story, the disciples are in a state of fear and doubt. They, they know that they are in a situation that is inescapable, but are trying to figure it out after the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. It has already been three days, and so Jesus begins his appearance to his followers. In today's story, Jesus appears to them in these words saying, peace be with you. Now, the disciples are frightened and have doubts. I'd be frightened too if I just buried one of my relatives and then they're now appearing in my kitchen table eating fish with me. I would be in fear too. I just had a mourning period with you. Now you're appearing after three days. There's people chasing me because I believed in you. And now there's more added fear because you are now in my, in my, my living room asking for something to eat. So now we understand that the that human instinct is coming in. The defense mechanism is starting to pop in during this time of hostility and fear. Now, the, now, the disciples, in today's story, Jesus appears to them in these words, peace be with you. The disciples are frightened and have doubts 
about what is happening, and Jesus proceeds to suppress their fear and doubt by asking, have you anything to eat? Now, Jesus eats a broiled fish and then continues to inform them that everything that has happened because the prophecies were foretold. In other words, Jesus is letting them know that even though they are in a state of fear and doubt, it should not consume them. But because Christ has fulfilled it on the cross. Now, church family, I want to bring this to your attention uh, for today. This sermon is not to medicate what is going on in this world, but it is to preach that we as God's community inherit through faith a divine support that is able to conquer all fears and doubt that exists in our time. That our fears and doubts that arise in our personal lives can be healed with the Lord Jesus Christ. If we were to apply the words of, <clears throat> of Jesus, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> of Jesus of peace be with you in today's context, then fear and doubt in a time of distress is to be acknowledged, not consumed. Now let me say that again. If we were to apply the words of Jesus that has been spoken to the, to the disciples saying, peace be with you, then fear and doubt in a time of distress is to be acknowledged. We know it's happening. We know it's there. But it's not to have it consume you and I. Peace is not only the things hoped for or the things unseen. Peace is acknowledging the situation. But you are not surrendering to its consumption. Now, we dial into our natural instincts. Uh, and so, when we dial into our nat natural instincts in response to a time of trauma, uncertainty, or suffering, our defense mechanism just pops right in. Oh, I will figure it out. That's what, that's what your defense mechanism is popping into. I will figure it out all by myself. I will get myself out of this mess. Don't touch me. Don't, don't surround me. Some people will post it on Facebook or post it on Twitter. We also at times fall into the presence of worry or doubt and fear when it is available as a comfort zone. At times I see my generation and younger generation on Facebook or social media, they post their emotional distress. We also reach out to friends and family members or, or support groups, yes, to obtain a sense of relief. But let me tell you something, Carson Valley. Have you ever sat down and had a conversation with Jesus? Have you ever eaten in meditation with Jesus Christ? Because we are often are seeking people or social media and other coping outlets to relieve our distress temporarily. Now today I urge you to put your trust in Jesus Christ in times of fear and doubt. That is what I'm urging you to do. Now John 16, says these words. I have said these things to you that in me you have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. A church family, have you ever been in a state of fear or doubt? Uh, where do you lay your emotional distress? Do you fall into it or do you cope with it? How are we to continue on this journey called life in distress? When in times of discomfort, physically, emotional, mentally, have you called on Jesus Christ? Now, today's gospel is telling you and I, a church family, that no matter where we look or we seek, in order to overcome life's greatest fears and doubts is to bring it to Jesus Christ. It is to call on the Lord at all times. In our world today, we have so many outlets, so many spaces that are developed to bring our fears and doubts to be harnessed. We even look in places that are ungodly, that prevent our relationships with Christ to be delimited. The only difference when we contend with stress, when we're wrestling with it, when we contend with it, it sometimes drains our energy, which brings us into more fear, to more doubt, more worry, and more distress. Now, when in fear, Jesus is here. Now, tap, look at your neighbor. Tap him on the shoulder 
and say these words. When in fear, when in fear Jesus, is here. Jesus is here. All right. Now let me remind you of these words that Jesus said, uh, church family. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, and for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and burden is light. My church family, reflect where your life is today. Reflect on what you have at the moment. What do you have at the moment? Reflect on what you have been blessed with from time to time. Because the last time I checked, the psalmist said these words, If it had not been for the Lord, where would you be today? Your money, your possessions, your education, your merits did not get you to where you are sitting today. It was the Lord who was on your side the whole time. The Lord was on your side at all times. Because when you are at true peace, you already know where to go. You already know where to go first if trouble arises. It is not to, it's not to your spouse. It is not to your pastor. I'm sorry. It is not to your social media platform, not to the bottle, not to the pipe, not to the nightclub, nor the casino. Oh, give or take, right? <laughs> Go to the Lord. That is what today is telling us. Go to the Lord first before you continue on. Going to the Lord first is what Jesus is telling us today. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. When you are in fear and doubt, lay your distress in the hands of the Lord to continue living in peace. Now, this goes on to my second part. Uh, as Christ's witnesses, peace be with you. As a Methodist church, we, we acknowledge that there are diagnoses in the fragments of fear and doubt that preside in mental health. As a church, our stance in advocating for mental health is acknowledging its occurrence and existence, but proceeding to seek resources and ways for healing, support, and compassion. One of the ways I recommend to all church members and attendees here in Carson Valley United Methodist Church is to establish a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Now, my church family, have you ever had a conversation with God in meditation or prayer in times of emotional distress? It seems overrated, right? It might sound like it doesn't work. Have you given God a chance to work on you? In today's gospel and last week's gospel, Jesus showed his wounds, his hands, his feet, and also his side. There was even an account that one of his disciples got to touch it to legitimize its authenticity. Have you considered trying to draw closer to Christ in prayer? Have you ever tried to reach for Jesus in your life? It is not about answers or revelations or results. It is, we're not trying to say that it is easy to reach for Jesus. We're not trying to say that to overcome fear is an overnight duo. It is not for results. It is about hope. Hope that is guaranteed when you put your faith in the Lord to obtain peace. I can guarantee you today that someone in our worship service or, or someone in your neighborhood or someone in your community is in a state of fear and doubt today. But let me tell you a secret a wise man once told me. You might not like it, but too bad. He said these words, we Methodists are stubborn people. We Methodists are a stubborn people. We Christians never give up. We are built different. We are not better. We're not trying to say we're better than the rest of the world. We're not trying to say that we, that we, we should be prioritized because we are built differently. We as Christ believers do not possess Special mutant powers or, or immortal physical beings that we can transform or teleport to, as you see on cartoons today. Now, we rely on faith and the power of God and his grace. 
We worship a God that lives and knows and is able to do anything we ask for if it's appropriate in his hands. He hears our suffering and happiness all the time. To be at peace is to draw near God's presence through Jesus Christ. It is to win the day, not to win the year, not to win the month. It is to win the day with Jesus, to praise him, to give thanks, to lament to him, to surrender to him. Give it all in prayer to Jesus. Take your burden to Christ, for he is here. Now look, look at your neighbor and tap him one more time. Go, go, let him know like this. And say these words. Repeat after me. God, God is, with me. is with me. All right. As God's people, we are also called to be there for one another. If you notice in today's gospel story by Luke, Jesus opens their minds. He opens it up to understand what is going on. And so the passage I wanted to point out today to recognize of opening your mind, opening your heart, that they are all witnesses of all these things that are happening. Now, church family, we are all witnesses sitting here today that when we have faith or we profess our faith in Jesus Christ, we are witnesses to all things prophesied in the prophets, the Psalms, and also in the patriarchs. I always tell my friends these these things. I always tell my nieces and my nephews and also my son, even though he doesn't understand yet, but that, that, you have, that, that you have two types of friends, the ones that you choose and the one that God chooses for you. You do the assessment who is still there for you. The ones you choose and the one that God chooses for you. Now look around you. I'll ask you, church family, look around you. Look around. Look around. Look around the church today, family. You are not the only one that belongs in the family of Christ. Here are your siblings. Now, now tap them one more time. One more time. Tap them one more time. <laughs> tap them. And say these words. I, I see, you. see you. Okay. Now one way, of, one way of living in peace is living in community. We are not perfect people. I always tell everyone that comes to Carson Valley, if you come and you believe that you're perfect or you are perfect, you're going to be very, very uncomfortable around us <laughs> because we make mistakes, right? And we have a common ground in this church, which is in Jesus Christ. We believe that Jesus is the reason why we are here. And when fear or doubt settles in your situation and uh, that is in distress, our church community are one of the places to pray and have devotion. Um, come to the body of Christ is what I'm saying. The body of Christ is not just this sanctuary. The body of Christ is a community of believers that God has blessed you with so that in times of distress, in times of discomfort, you know where to go to get recharged up with faith. We have a member care team. We have everyone here, even myself. But that is the reason why we, when living in peace in the community is knowing where to go when seeking God. I remember growing up in my, my younger years, my father had given me four tasks when I got home from school or football practice. And you know, there'll be times where, there'll be times, I, it, it was two-a-day practices. I don't know if you've ever played sports. And for all of you that played football, there's two-a-days. You have a practice, full contact, 8.30 in the morning, and then you have another one at 6.45 p.m. And then you have lifting and running between 8.30 and 6.45. So you have full pads morning and night. And any time I'd come home after these two days, those laws, those four tasks still stand at my house. My dad told me these four tasks. Number one, clean and sweep the outside stairs and the sidewalks. Now, clean my room before bed. My dad will come in and he'll open the door and he'll make sure that, that all the... That my bed was made, he'd, he'd check, and my dad was uh, pre-military, and so, and he would check if everything's hung up and folded at, at, at a certain rate. But he would wake me up at the middle of the night to make sure that I would do those tasks, right? And then the third one was all garbage cans must be empty at the end of the night and double check all doors to make sure they were locked. It was my responsibility. 
along with, the, with my siblings to make sure that our home was taken care of. Now, church family, this world is indirectly, is indirectly calling on Jesus Christ. It needs peace. As a church body, the first epistle of John calls on us as the children of God. Not only are we to call on Jesus in times of distress, but we must fulfill our duty as salt and light to our communities and this world. Now, that, that, that God has given us tasks, spoken through his only son, Jesus Christ, to proclaim repentance and forgiveness of sins in the name of Jesus, to do all things in the name of Jesus Christ. As we were cleaning the church this past Saturday or yesterday, and I'm still suffering from some soreness. You know, I was in the front, you know, everyone was beeping at me, waving. And it reminded me that it, when we were working yesterday and we were cleaning up our church and just having a good time doing it. It reminded me that this world still has hope to receive peace for it has an abundance of God-fearing people. Whether the world will seek Jesus or not, we as a community of God must continue to praise the name of Jesus in our world's distress. The work must go on. For we cannot do it in, on our own. We must call on God through Jesus Christ in prayer, devotion, and meditation to give us strength, to give us courage, and the will to pull this world out of its fear and doubt and distress. Let me say this prayer. Father, we praise your name in this time of reflection during the Easter liturgical season. We understand that we as people must call on your name for peace, peace within ourselves, peace in our communities, peace within our world, we pray for this world to seek peace, not in weapons or violence or technology or science. But we ask you, Lord, that we may seek it in you. And so we ask you for all this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'd like to ask you, uh, let's ask the church congregation to please stand if you are able. As we sing our closing hymn, Lord, I lift your name on high. Good job, everybody. Uh, Reminder is more than a few. Uh, so flowers today are in celebration of Jack and Sharon Calvert's and daughter Lynn Lennox's birthday. Happy birthday. Flowers are also in celebration of Margie Donaldson's daughter's birthday. Happy birthday. Uh, Join the United Women's in Faith Heavenly Holiday Craft Team first and third Mondays, uh, which is tomorrow, 9.30 to noon. All welcome supplies provided. Uh, we have uh, timeless treasures according, accepting gently used gifts, jewelry, and decor items that others might buy. No clothing, please. Um, third Mondays, which is tomorrow, is 10 a.m. to noon. Uh, this Tuesday at 5 p.m., member care. Um, our future playground, donations, enthusiasm, Enthusiastically accepted, Lynn? Enthusiastically accepted. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, we are already uh, shopping for fencing to separate that from the dog park so everybody can have their space. Uh, we're waiting to see how much money we raise to see what kind of playground equipment we can afford. 
So if you'd like to make a donation, and it's in the form of a check, make it out to the church. In the memo, just put playground. Or if you have a cash donation, put an envelope and also mark that playground. We appreciate it. Church Council this Saturday, April 20th at 9 a.m. It will be riveting. Riveting. <laughs> also, Saturday night, the new movie, Wonka. This is a new release, just came out on DVD. Uh, it is actually a musical. It is a very cute, fun movie. And yes, they talk about chocolate. So we'll have our popcorn. I can't imagine what kind of surprise treat we would have. <laughs> Harvest of Thanksgiving next Sunday. And let me say the benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you forevermore, church. Amen. <laughs>